Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And coming to you almost live from the Sack Brony Meetup, we are talking about My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 14, Fame and Misfortune. And I need to remember to stop slouching. So yeah, we have a live audience of two. <laughs> Not everybody Hi. could stay for the whole meetup. Hi, every pony. Hi. Hi. Yeah, you can probably barely hear them in the background. I have extra mics for that, though. <laughs> oh, no, some pony's feeling shy. That's okay. Thank you, M.A. Larson. Seriously, this was an amazingly fun episode. Meme check. That was actually a meme. Thank you, Larson. <laughs> what happened right after the episode where Twilight got her wings, <laughs> which was very nicely pointed out in this episode. Yes, I think many elements of the fandom were represented in those fan ponies. Yeah, and he should know he's gone to a lot of cons. Very nicely well-written episode. Hmm, where to start? How about the fact that Twilight allowed a book to get that damaged? Yeah, I was trying to figure that one out. Like, I know we haven't seen it, but why was it in that condition? Was it because Spike put it back there and he completely forgot about it? Is, is that what happened? I know, he wasn't even in the library. No, I, I'm talking about when they were moving the whole library over. Well, hey, maybe it got damaged by the fact that it was in the library when it exploded. Because wasn't that journal before the castle? Yeah, it would have to be before the castle. Hmm, I'm trying to remember because they, they started writing the journal after they visited the two sisters' castle. So it may have been after the castle. Yeah, because they found the journal which inspired them to start the journal. We should have done some fact-checking first. Yeah. A member of the audience was shaking his head no. <laughs> uh, quick, someone do research. I can edit this out. <laughs> uh, oh, look, the computer's open. <laughs> uh, so we'll just continue if he finds the information. They had the journal in season four so they could find the elements they needed to defeat Kirik. Hmm. That'd be in the season yeah. four. I remember that because, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It was at the beginning of the season. You might want to come closer when you say stuff like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Like I said, it's fine. I'll edit part, parts of this out. So. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, the journal was used in um, season four when Discord gave them the journal back, all bookmarked the places where they needed to um, find the elements that turned into the keys. That yeah, I know, I know what you're talking. That enabled them to defeat Tyrek. So that was uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It was actually finale, it was so actually the beginning of season four where they started exploring the sisters' castle. Right. And that's how they ended up with all the keys because each key event was written in the journal. And when Discord gave them back the journal, he bookmarked everything that was relevant to what they needed to do right then. Yeah. So that they could find the keys to open the box and enable them to defeat Tyrion. Yep, and we've never seen the rainbow power again. Those toys did not sell, apparently. <laughs> well, either that or that main was way too difficult to animate. <laughs> or both. That video turned out to be one of our more popular. Yeah, why can't we get any more like that? Hey, internet. Now back to the episode. <laughs> so it started out really nice with Twilight remembering the journal and wanting to share it with her friends and making a copy for each of them, that was all awesome. But then she gets the bright idea to publish it. Like, that was never written with the intent of public consumption. You guys put in personal thoughts and feelings. You really want to share that with all of Equestria. And I love how Equestria thought it was fake. <laughs> Most of those ponies don't realize that this is apparently real stories. Because they're like, why were those even included? I'm like, because they're part of a group? Duh? <laughs> yeah, they were looking on it mostly as a work of fiction, which I guess this is how Daring Do gets away with it. Oh, that's an excellent point. Because she writes exactly what happens and publishes it and makes a living off of it. Ah, that would explain Daring Do and how easily she gets by, especially since she's kind of like, Clark Kent when it comes to disguises. Yeah, well, nobody expects to walk up and see Daring Do. At least people think Daring Do's a fictional character, 
in Metropolis, people know Superman's real. Though something else just popped in my head. Maybe this is how Daring Do started releasing her books. Maybe she went, well, maybe people might like this journal. Then she releases it and everyone thinks it's fake. So she's like, I got an idea. <laughs> that would be really interesting, especially if you could find an old copy of the first Daring Do book and see if she still used a pen name in the beginning. Hmm. Or did she publish it as Daring Do? That's an excellent point. Too bad we don't exist in that universe or have a portal to it so we can go, hey, here's the first edition. I written exactly as she put it. Ah, oh well, yeah, she did just kind of toss this out into the world. Hey, it caught on. So now I'm sure we're beyond people fighting over the different factions within the book. Ponies are going to start clamoring for a sequel book. Why aren't there any more volumes? Why is there only one volume? <laughs> and there's also how Starlight helped. That was wonderful. Yeah, I can't with a spell when... Mm. <laughs> yeah, anyways, I know the spell. Enough said. We don't need to go into my whole manifesto and how I brainwashed all these ponies. We're, we're trying to move past that now, remember? <laughs> yes. Unlike the episode we watched again just before this, you know, because this was a meetup and everything, which was Spice Up Your Life. An excellent episode. Man, I love that design on that pony. I suddenly can't remember her name. <laughs> Something Marsala. That would be Saffron Masala. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's see. So her design and specifically the beginning of that episode where, yeah, after a certain pony destroyed it by using a time... Why do we have to keep bringing this up? It's kind of like when I already go, I thought we weren't going to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we all agreed to never mention this again. <laughs> but who could forget about Tom? Hey, I like Tom. He's a nice guy. Yeah, bit, bits on the stonish side, really. Yeah, you know, the, the strong silent type. Mm-hmm. That's a funny ship. I've probably seen it somewhere. Tom and I believe it's Boulder? Yes, yes, I'm sure it's been done. Okay, so it's an excellent episode, especially pointing out all the flaws in fandoms. Not just the MLP fandom, but fandoms, period. Yeah, we got a little bit of that with the Daring Do convention. But I think this gave a much broader perspective on it because you had all the different factions. This is my favorite character. No, this is my favorite character. This character is perfect. Why did they even put this character in this book? I took out all the parts that were boring, thinking of every Phantom Menace edit. And every transformative moment for every character. They were better before this. <laughs> uh, you're not the Fluttershy from the book. I'm not quite sure I like that. <laughs> I want to know, how do you have the book not shrink-wrapped, get it signed, and then say it has to stay pristine? Yeah, the thing is, I don't think they had shrink-wrap in the universe. But apparently they have plastic bags. Yeah, well, he was putting in a collector's bag, but it wasn't in a collector's bag when he asked Twilight to sign it. Well, I think, yeah, he was a unicorn. So, magic. Magic would probably be protective that way when you're levitating it, so... I also like, it was so worth it to come all the way here. I'm like, yep, yep, that's fans right there. Mm -hmm. Kind of like when I've fan squealed over certain people I've met at conventions. Yes, yes. It was less of fan squealing and more of a... <laughs> Poke. He froze again. Someone, quick, get me a reboot disc. He's broken again. So, more of your thoughts? Maybe nitpicks? <laughs> Well, I always have nitpicks. It was just the way each of the ponies was affected differently. Rarity was getting boycotted. Fluttershy was getting picked on. I think these were based on the MLP fandom reactions to each character, because I remember people not liking Rarity at all at the beginning. Oh, she didn't have as much growth opportunity in the beginning. I think she was originally presented more one-dimensional, but I think they also had some trouble with her design overall because her original element of harmony was supposed to be creativity, not generosity. Mm. And I remember Rarity's popularity didn't take off until Art of the Dress, and then it just took off. So I was thinking this kind of mirrored the worst parts of what people thought of the characters at first, or what they thought of them for a while, like specifically Fluttershy. Like, how have you not learned from these lessons? I mean, we've talked about that particular thing. We have, but at the same time, 
In the episode, Fluttershy makes an excellent counterpoint. Do you really learn something completely when you just do it once? Or does it take you several times to learn how to do something? I know it takes me way too much, unless it's something I'm extremely interested in, and then you will lose me for several hours as I repeatedly break something to fix it. <laughs> You're like, I'm just going to unplug this so that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> Yes, we've never done a remote before, so we're learning about recording in different surroundings. Yep. Like random sound effects happening through the projector that we just finished watching episodes on. Hey, it's bigger than our screen. I say it's a plus. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Definitely a plus. Oh, and then you have everyone deciding that they want to be a part of Applejack's family, that, that her life is so homey and welcoming that they're just going to join right in. I love the animations in this episode for that specifically and just how everyone's... <laughs> I'm stress sewing! I, I, I could see that. It's like, Where are you, what are you wearing? My emotions! <laughs> uh, I love how she just starts measuring Fluttershy randomly. <laughs> and she's like, oh, sorry, dear, have it. <laughs> yes, especially considering that Fluttershy has modeled for her in the past. And then Rainbow Dash gets to find out what it's like when everyone agrees with her. <laughs> yep. This is what she thought she wanted. And now she's like, yeah, not so much. I, I have other things to do. I have actual obligations. Well, you know, considering she is still a weather pony, and I'm sure she works weather locally, and she's in the Wonderbolts, and... Yeah, she's... Probably a very busy pony. I think all of the main six are very busy ponies now. Not that they weren't before, but more so because they've learned to take on additional responsibilities and just the passage of time. Things change in your life. And apparently everyone who read the journal and thought Pinkie Pie was always funny never read the Party of One section. <laughs> Ooh, uh, speaking of that particular part, I love how... The two ponies went, she's so much funnier in person. You've guys known me for your entire lives. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm misquoting that, but that's basically the gist of what happened in that scene. Yeah, basically, you guys have known me. You live in Ponyville. I live in Ponyville. We know each other, but apparently now just because of this, you no longer actually know me. It's all just entertainment. Yeah. Don't ask me why I'm yawning, because I've had plenty of coffee tonight. <laughs> No, I stole half of your second dose, so maybe that wasn't enough. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't killed me yet. They we fed us. Yeah! So, what did you think of the song? I really liked the song. I was trying just to enjoy it in the moment, because I had a feeling it wasn't going to fix anything. It was, as far as the other ponies were concerned, it was just a performance, and wouldn't actually fix anything. Yeah, I had that feeling too, because I'm like looking at them as they're singing the song, specifically the audience part, and I was like, yeah, they're not reacting at all. They are like literally standing there waiting for them to finish, and then they were going to go back to whatever they were doing. The song also reminded me a lot of the final song in Rainbow Rocks. The way the music was going and the notes felt a lot like either the Dazzling's part of the song, because it sounded a lot like We Will Not Be Ignored. Mm -hmm. The music that was along with those particular lines sounded yeah. a lot like that to me. Yeah, the we shall be adored. But the message was more in line with what the main six plus Starlight was singing. Of how we come together and we're stronger because we're together. And we have flaws. and Yeah, yeah. and you, you, meant, you said Starlight, but I think you meant Sunset. Somewhat interchangeable, yes. I meant Sunset. Yes, the other sixth ranger. I mean, yes, I still consider Sunset Shimmer the proper sixth ranger. Really? Sunset Shimmer? <laughs> yeah, I meant Sunset Shimmer. <laughs> Not Starlight Glimmer. Who's the other sixth ranger, like, how there were, like, two extra rangers in Dino Thunder. Yes, Power Rangers and Pony goes together so wonderfully, kind of like Justice League and Power Rangers. That's a comic. Like, that's a thing. So I'm going to, like, that's an interesting combination right there. It is. It is. Yeah, the song had a really nice feel to it. It had nice animations. I love the lyrics. I love... The animation was amazing. I love the little things. I love 
how we got little personal bits when they did the side by side of the main sixes sharing the screen together. Mm -hmm. And speaking of sharing, did you notice that some of those signs that uh, the fan ponies were holding had uh, two cutie marks on them? So they were pointing out shipping in this episode. Just a tiny bit. Hmm. Yes. Remember, people, Canon Sync ship. So I think we've gone over the positive bits. How many negatives have we gone over yet? <laughs> <laughs> we've mostly been in the positive because this is a bit tongue in cheek. Looking at fandoms in general, the fandom that the show in particular has. And it was nice to see that the problem couldn't just be wrapped up in one episode. It's not something that's going to be a two-parter, but it's something that's now going to be an ongoing issue. Because we've complained in the past of, they've saved all of Equestria. Twilight's an alicorn. There aren't that many alicorns in existence. Why are these ponies not getting automatically recognized no matter where they go? Yeah, and it's nice that they're finally <laughs> getting... Like the stardom that we were like, why don't they have this in the first place? No, and it's nice that it's self-inflicted. They never intended it to happen, but if they hadn't published the journal, none of this would have happened. Mm -hmm. Also, I half expected Starlight to go and get Celestia and Luna. Mm, I was thinking she was going to undo the copy spell and make all the journals disappear. That's another solution. I was also thinking that they might actually use the time travel spell again. I was thinking a memory erase spell. Ah, we had a bunch of solutions to this problem that weren't used in the episode. Yes, well, we're used to Starlight trying to fix everything with magic. And this is real character growth for her. She went and found something to help the main six that didn't involve using magic. Well, it might have involved using a little bit of magic, but not any kind of, I'm going to alter your mind and make you like me kind of magic or something like that. She probably just used teleport to get them there as quickly as possible. Yeah, she might have used a seeking spell to find ponies who were reacting in the way that Twilight hoped ponies would react and then probably winked them in to get around the crowd. I mean, they're just foals. Don't subject them to that. Yeah, those crazy adults. Crazy, crazy adults. Uh, there there were some crazy kids out there, too. Remember oh, yeah, that, the Rainbow Dash fans. Mm -hmm, which were primarily young Pegasi, who needed somebody to idolize, apparently. And apparently just being a Wonderbolt wasn't enough to get her that idolization. Yeah. Rainbow Dash is a Wonderbolt. Another thing that was kind of interesting was the fact that that conversation that got Rarity upset was how they were talking about, like, oh, we found out all this nasty, like, secretive stuff that they were hiding from, this kind of thing, is basically what they were saying. But also then they were going into, but why was Rarity in there? And the moment I saw the edge of the newspaper, we're like, that's Rarity. I feel so sorry for her. Yeah, it's like bridal gossip all over again. Mm-hmm. Also, I like how the Kingdom Hearts Crusaders were using it to promote their summer camp. Yeah, kind of a little bit like Twilight Time, cashing in the, on the cachet of knowing some pony famous. Yeah, and then poor Apple Bloom got stuck at the farm. Mm-hmm. With all of these ponies that, yeah, there, there's such a thing as being a little too welcoming. I love how some people were putting on fake cutie marks to be more part of the Apple family. Some? It was basically everyone at Sweet Apple Acres. I'm too busy doing family stuff! Why don't you make them leave and kick out my family? <laughs> wow, they got her number. Yeah, it's like episode zero all over again. Hi, girls! Yeah. So I, I wonder if we'll see Celestia and Luna in a later episode because they are mentioned in the journal and the lessons. So will at some point they intervene? Or mm. will the, the main six consult them for help because... They're used to being royal public figures. Specifically Celestia. Especially Celestia. Yeah, she had to do it on her own for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Also, that seems to be such an arbitrary number that they throw around a lot. This happened a thousand years ago. This happened a thousand years ago. This happened a thousand years ago. So apparently a thousand years ago was a very busy time. Uh, apparently, or apparently that's when we started keeping records, because apparently nothing happened before then. Ah. So this thing we were just sitting there going, wow, we should like do something. I have an idea. Let's build a kingdom. Nah, that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, but it'd be fun. I could raise the moon and you could raise the sun. That kind of actually kind of sounds fun. I could use a tan. 
You tan? I just burn. How am I supposed to follow that up? Sisterly banter like that. <laughs> I'm surprised he was able to do so while pulling it off the top of my head. You have your moments. Thank you. So, uh, should we wrap things up? Well, I'm thinking we hit all our main highlights. Did we miss anything? Questions? Comments? We got it all. We're pros. <laughs> <laughs> technically, we don't get paid for this, so technically we're not pros. I'm a pro artist because I've gotten paid for my work. <laughs> no, we're, we act very professionally. We attempt to anyways. It's a good act. Yeah, yeah. So, what are your final thoughts? Really enjoyed the episode. Nice blending of kind of real world and pony world type reactions. A lot of good lessons in here. Not just looking at it from an adult perspective, but this is still technically a kid's show. Fame's not all it's cracked up to be. Think about the consequences of your actions. Good intentions can lead to bad results. I really enjoyed this episode. It was very well done. The writing was excellent. I was expecting something good when I heard that M.A. Larson wrote this episode. So I'm like, wow, I remember hearing that he might be involved in this season, but not a lot because, you know, he's still working on his excellent selling book series, which I've finally read the second one, and it came out pretty good. You can definitely see he's growing as an actual book writer compared to a TV writer. His first book definitely felt like it was a reworked series of scripts into a book. And it had a lot of those problems authors first run into. No, but it was still very strong for a first entry. And it had good messages in it. Some of the writing was scripted in such a way that it needed visuals to go with it. Which is how a television or movie script works. I was expecting... An interesting episode, and I got a very good and interesting episode. The song was really well done. I liked how the music was. The animation that went along with it was, wow, they have gotten so much better, especially since we've recently watched an episode from season one. Wow. <laughs> Big difference. Yeah, just amazing improvements overall. So, outro? Outro. Well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Was Magic, season seven, Episode 14, Fame and Misfortune. And thank you to the Sackbronies for allowing us to come here and record right after we've seen the episode. <laughs> yep. And thanks to Sackbronies for letting us do a remote from their event. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with that one because we, yeah. <laughs> thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, comment, watch other videos. Hey, remember this one was a remote. In the Sacramento area, why don't you check out the Sac Bronies? If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and I'm sure somewhere else. If you really like Lux's art and want some of your own, please check his commission page for pricing and availability. Like this channel, but uh, don't want a commission? Check out our Patreon and Ko-fi pages. Patreon starts at a dollar and Ko-fi at three.